Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome back to the wonderful world of dubious engineering. Today, we have the amazing two-head cassette console made by Nakamichi, the Nakamichi 600. It's got a couple of problems with it, <laughs> and they're not just external problems that we need to fix. So it's got handles that are loose, uh, the playheads and everything are absolutely filthy, the internal mechanism needs a good old clean. We need to demagnetize the heads, we need to clean the heads, we need to check the electronics, we need to check the tape speed, we need to check the gains, the wows and the flutters, and we need to make sure that all of those knobs and switches work and do what they say on the tin. So without further ado, Let's get in there and see what's inside the Nakamichi 600. So on removing the case, there's plenty of mechanical bits and pieces in here, and there's plenty of electronics as well. And as you can tell, everything's standard sort of plated through hole electronics from the era that was. The power supply is located on the back, that's a large transformer there. To the left of the transformer is a little solenoid which automatically stops the tape system. We've got a bunch of potentiometers that are probably going to need a little bit of attention at some point in the future. And there's that lovely stop mechanism. There are also a whole bunch of fuses, and strangely, fuses are dotted around in various different locations inside this device. So without further ado, let's continue taking this apart. Let's get the handles off of it, and let's get the top fascia plate off of it. I must admit, just these knobs here are absolutely solid. They're all made out of milled aluminium and they're painted or anodized and they're just beautiful. And can you see the thickness of that fascia plate? It's about three mil thick and some lovely graphics on it. So it's relatively easy to pop the mechanism out of the unit. And once you've got it out, you'll notice yet more fuses kicking around. But ultimately, what we've got to do is we've got to change that or at least inspect that drive belt. But I am going to change it. My guess is that drive belt probably hasn't been replaced since this unit was new. So that drive belt must be ooh, many years old. <laughs> we'll get into the history of Nakamichi in a little while, I guess. But anyway, so what we've got then is we've got a drive motor which is connected to a large massy flywheel and then there's just a little tensioning wheel there as well. The drive belt itself is actually in reasonably good condition all things considered but we are going to buy a replacement for it. So in order to get the drive belt out what we have to do is unscrew the center spindle nut which holds the flywheel in place and then we can slide that belt through. Once the belt's off, we can then use a ruler to measure it. It's always a good idea to take a note of the dimensions of these belts. And the great news is I've done this once before in my life and I've got quite a few belts left over from previous experiences. So thankfully in my stock, I had a replacement belt, which is great news. So <laughs> here we go. Let's fumble this belt back into place. And there we have it, a brand spanking new drive belt in place. Having replaced the belt, we should now be safe in the knowledge that this machine should continue operation for quite a few more years. Perhaps now it's time to give everything a really, really good clean up. Trust me, this thing's dirty. All the mechanical assembly done and dusted, everything's been put back together. It's Enjoy a break from listening to me and a lovely cleaning montage and we'll get back to you in a few minutes with how we demagnetize the head. I think I've got quite a novel solution.
here we are, back with the buttons of the cassette mechanism. Using Gorilla Glue, I've gone ahead and stuck these puppies back down. And they are beautiful. They're made out of solid milled billet aluminium, and they've got a brushed finish to them. They're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> a screwdriver and a magnet. And look at that naughty magnet trying to get away from the screwdriver. All right, what is he up to, you might ask? <laughs> I needed a way of degaussing or demagnetizing the play and record head of this unit. And in order to do that, what I've done is I've taken two neodymium rare earth magnets and I've put them in their opposing polarities on a screwdriver. And then what I've gone ahead and done is I've proceeded to spin those extra strong magnets in front of the cassette playhead. This is my way of degaussing or demagnetizing tape heads. Clearly, please be careful using powerful magnets around mechanical mechanism. Right, let's have a look at these front panel controls. Simple one first, an on-off switch. And we've got an IM suppression switch, which gives us the ability to be able to turn up the signal to noise ratio. And the Dolby NR switch, the noise reduction switch, effectively does the same thing. We've got an MPX switch, which gives us the ability to get rid of the 18 kilohertz tones from FM recordings. And we have a 400 hertz switch, which gives us the ability to be able to lay down a 400 hertz tone on a tape so that we can calibrate things. Then we have the EQ section, and the tape type section selector switches. So without further ado, let's go ahead and make a 400 hertz calibration tape and put this system through its paces and adjust all of the pots and tweak everything and get everything aligned nicely to make good recordings and good playback. So I mentioned on social media that I got one of these Nakamichi 600 cassette decks and it got quite a bit of interest from a few friends. Paul May, thank you very much indeed for your donation of cassettes to this fantastic experiment. I hope you enjoy the video, mate. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And then we have here a stack of cassette tapes, all in their original casings. None of them have been used at all. They're all absolutely brand spanking new. And some of them are chrome cassettes and some of them are just standard ferric. But the key thing is here, these guys very, very kindly donated these cassettes to this, uh, to this system. And I'll be making sure that I make use of these cassettes. Thank you very, very much, gentlemen. So, Paul, again, thank you so much. And Ian, well... <laughs> What to say? Here we go. We've clearly developed some friends. Okay, let's get a cassette inserted in the Nakamichi. Oh. <laughs> mm, smells like cassette tape. Right. Open. Yeah, this was always the fun bit, wasn't it? And I think that's why I had long fingernails as a kid. This will do it. <laughs> My gun knife. Straight in there. Oh, this, I tell you what, I haven't experienced this for ages. I'm savouring this. I'm absolutely loving this. Oh. <laughs> and what's magnificent about these cassette tapes actually their cases have got rounded edges to them they're not squared off they're just really well thought out there it is beautiful so this white clear piece of tape here is the lead in tape and then as the tape progresses, you then get to see, in fact, <laughs> I'm going to do something that I'm sure everybody did as a kid. I'm going to go ahead and use, there we go, look at that. Use a pencil or a biro, biro lids were the best if I remember correctly. And there's our tape. So this is type 2 position chrome tape. So we'll be setting the switch on the machine 
to 70 microseconds. The next thing you're going to ask me is what am I using to listen to these tapes on? Is it going to be good enough quality? I believe it will be. This is a Topaz AM10, a Cambridge Audio amplifier. In conjunction with that Topaz amplifier, I'm using here some Mission 774 speakers. Let's press the eject button, open the cassette carrier, pop the cassette in. Oh, listen to that. And then let's just turn the unit on and listen to a cassette that's got nothing recorded on it. Just some very gentle fluctuations of the needles. Hardly anything at all. I can't hear a sound. So now what we do is we turn on the 400 hertz tone and we record that onto the cassette. <laughs> so we're really close now the process is this to rewind the tape reset the counter press record and play with the 400 hertz tone on this gives you zero dbs on both meters stop rewind the tape press the play button if either of these meters don't hit exactly zero dB, you then tweak this potentiometer, whichever potentiometer you need to. You then rewind the tape, <laughs> record and play that 400 hertz tone back on the tape again. Rewind the tape, play. With a bit of luck this time, we got it nailed. Oh, near as darn it. Oh, there we go. So we've now aligned or calibrated the meter. <laughs> this is fun. So I went ahead and downloaded the both the user guide and the service manual for this. And it's fantastic. It's just so detailed. It literally talks you through every little bit of how to operate this, how to set it up. It's absolutely magnificent. So I've had a lot of fun doing this. It's a little bit too complicated for this video. Um, it's just taken an awful long time to do it. Um, and trying to record every detail just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to get the scope out and show you how good a, a 400 hertz sine wave looks on this machine. How's that sound? There is just a little bit of variation there not a lot that was a trigger sequence issue by the way that flick there's just a little bit of variation but it's hardly audible what we want to do is the acid test what does it sound like <laughs> no not listen to acid music but what does it really sound like when you've recorded something so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record something which is uh, from this digital piece of equipment here, this synthesizer, a tune that I made up the other day. I'm going to record it onto the Nakamichi on a chrome tape. All my settings are correct. The tape is set to chrome and the EQ set is set correctly. I've turned Dolby on as well. I've got all of my line levels set up correctly, so everything should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and record this let's adjust our master volume levels to zero
There we go, that's where we need it. Alright, there we go. Enough of that. Let's play it back and see how it sounds. And we'll wait for the tape deck to do its auto stop. There it goes. It's a four second auto stop on this device, by the way. Excuse the noisy vehicle. 